Now we get to displacement current and the general form of Ampere's law. So this is where the real fun begins. Uh, so here is a mystery that was solved by Maxwell. Now uh, the history of this is that Faraday had figured out uh, pretty much all this stuff, but there was something that just did not compute uh, and uh, it didn't even work with Ampere's law, and then Maxwell made his addition to Ampere's law that made it all make sense. So here's what happened. Now, if you are filling up a capacitor like this, and the current's going this way, the capacitor's filling up, and current leaves because these, these charges are positive charges are repelled and they go that way, your capacitor's filling up, there is a current as the capacitor fills. So there is a current. So sensibly, there is a magnetic field, and you can use your, uh, your wire right-hand rule to determine what the direction of the magnetic field would be. Let's go ahead and do that. So we've got our, uh, this way is the current, so it's going to be like that. So what we get is a magnetic field with coming out of the page right there and going into the page right there. I'll just label that. That's the B field right there. And it's the same on this side. The current's going to the right. So coming out of the page there, going into the page there, out of the page there, into the page there. Now inside here, there is no current. Current can't travel from this side of your capacitor to this side. If it is, your capacitor's not working. It's leaking. So here's the mystery. Even though there's no current in there, they're still the same exact magnetic field. The magnetic field exists there inside the capacitor too. What the heck's going on? So uh, what Maxwell decided or figured out was that even if you don't have current, if you have a changing electric field, there is a changing electric field in there because charges are building up here and they're creating an electric field. Let me draw that in here. They are creating an electric field that looks like this. And as more charges go onto those capacitors, that electric field is getting stronger. And as more charges get on, it gets even stronger. And it keeps getting stronger and stronger until the capacitor's filled up for that uh, voltage difference. So it turns out that a changing electric field acts just like a current. So what they did was they started calling it displacement current. So we're just going to start calling the normal current that we always have, we'll call that the conduction current to differentiate it. Uh, it's just moving charges, that's all that is. But we have to uh, come up with a different name for this new stuff, this changing electric flux, which also creates a B field. So uh, Changing electric field or changing electric flux to be specific also produces this B field. So Maxwell called it the displacement current. And he gave it the symbol I sub D. And you'll see all it is is epsilon naught times the rate of change of electric flux. So a changing electric flux produces a magnetic field. Changing electric flux produces a magnetic field. And this thing right here, epsilon naught times the rate of change of electric flux, that is called the displacement current, I sub D. And it acts just like any other current in terms of what kind of magnetic field it creates. You can even measure it in amperes. The units are identical to amperes. Let's recall that electric flux is just E dot dA. Electric flux is E dot dA. So all we need to do is once we figure that out, if we can figure out the rate of change, we've got the displacement current. It has the exact same effect as current in terms of magnetic fields. So Maxwell added to Ampere's law. And here is what is called Maxwell's addition to Ampere's law. And it's right here. Uh, Ampere's law, as you recall, let's just write that down so we can remember what that is. 
Ampere's law is integral about a closed loop of b dot ds equals mu naught i. And Maxwell said, well, we've got to also include the displacement current. So all that Maxwell added was this right here. Integral of b dot ds is mu naught times i plus the displacement current. And very often, we'll just either have conduction current or we'll have displacement current, or we could have both. Both of them will cause magnetic fields. Now, we're starting to get to some fun stuff because a changing electric field will create a magnetic field. And once we get to Faraday's law, which is coming up next, a changing magnetic field or flux will create an electric field. And that is when God said, let there be light. That's what he was saying. A changing magnetic flux produces an electric field. Changing electric flux produces a magnetic field. And it self-creates. It propagates itself through empty space. Very awesome stuff. We'll get to that later. Something to look forward to. Uh, anyway, uh, so here is our complete, right here, Ampere's Law with Maxwell's addition. Looks like this. Here it is. B dot ds integral about a closed loop will be mu naught i plus mu naught times epsilon naught d phi e dt. This part right here that I'll highlight, this is i sub d, the displacement current. It is not a flow of electrons, but it's a changing electric flux. So the mystery that Maxwell was trying to solve was we knew there was magnetic fields out here due to the current, but why was there an identical magnetic field in here? Absolutely identical. So um, what I'm going to show you right now is that the current I that's going through this wire right here and also going out of this wire right here is identical to the displacement current epsilon naught times the rate of change of the electric flux. And I will show you that right now. I'm going to clear this out. And first, we've got to understand what's going on and why there actually is a displacement current or really a change in electric flux. So as this current goes on here, charges start to build up on here. And that pushes other charges off of here to leave negative charges. So you get an electric field right between these two plates. That's the E field. And as more charge builds up on this plate, you get a stronger E field. So the electric field keeps changing between those two plates, causing a changing electric flux. And that is what the displacement current is, epsilon naught times the rate of change of electric flux. So I'm going to prove to you now that I equals ID. So first of all, I want to establish what the electric field is between those two plates. It is going to be sigma over epsilon naught, where sigma is the uh, surface charge density on this plate that's got area A. So let's go ahead and write this as sigma is the charge per unit area and epsilon naught is epsilon naught. I'm going to rewrite this as Q over A epsilon naught. That is the electric field between those plates. And that is changing. As more charge gets built up on that plate, the electric field changes. The next thing I'm going to show you is that, uh, just a reminder of what the displacement current is, I sub D, again, it's not really a current. It's not charges moving. It acts just like a current in terms of making a magnetic field when it uh, goes through there, but the displacement current is epsilon naught times the rate of change of electric flux per unit time. So what I want to do is I want to show that these two things are equal. So I'm going to rewrite ID like this, epsilon naught. What is the electric flux? DDT of the electric flux, which is just the electric field dotted on the area vector of that plate. So going back up here, we see the area vector. A is pointed that way. There's my area vector. It's always perpendicular with the area itself. 
And notice that the E field is parallel to that area vector, so our dot product just becomes epsilon naught times the rate of change of just E times A. Our dot product just becomes EA because the E field and the A vector are parallel to each other. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time. ID equals epsilon naught. The things that stay the same in here, the A stays the same. So it's just going to be the rate of change, DDT, of the E field. OK, well, we found above that that E field can be expressed this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and put it in for that E field right there. So this becomes epsilon naught A DDT times Q over A epsilon naught. Now, look at this. A doesn't change, so that can come out. That actually cancels that. Epsilon naught doesn't change. That comes out. That cancels that. All I'm left with is ID is equal to the rate of change DDT of Q. DQ DT. Thus, it is shown that ID is equal to I. That's why the magnetic fields are the same out here and in here, because this displacement current in here, which is a changing electric flux, is the same magnitude as the current that's going through there.